Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the SOS number 218RG3. This is a SOS template kit is what it is. We don't sell these very often, and I think that the times that we do is to folks that are setting up to do a job. Um, you know, I've got, I've sold an entire kit to someone who had only three hinges to mortise, and I get that, I understand that. I've prepped these hinges Lots of times I've never ordered or used one of their kits or templates, um, and it's because I've just manufactured my own. But a lot of people aren't in the um, position or of the desire or in the part of the process to make their own template or to use the own template, your, the, uh, you know, use a template that's been made by them. Uh, there might be someone in purchasing and a project manager and then an architect and a specifier and an owner and then there's the construction company and then there's at the bottom of the food chain there's the guy who's going to have to be there to route all this material um, here put these in call me when it's done um, and that person says you know that kind of thing occasionally in the last time not this one the one before it about a month ago I sold this kit um, was to a project manager who wanted to give his field guy, here are the hinges, here's the kit, here's the router bit, here's the uh, threaded collar for the router, okay? Uh, everything to do the job, everything. That doesn't happen often, uh, but in that case it did. This client, uh, this is going to Puerto Rico, and this client ordered only the kit they must have some hinges to prep um, prepping for sauce hinges is easy and simple and straightforward once you've stared that demon in the face and you know stared it down you have to have a willingness a moxie even to uh, approach the hinge and say I'm going to master this hinge and once you have that willingness then you will master it because it's you know, there's one cardinal rule with sauce and once you understand it, it's done. That cardinal rule is the, the dimension from the pole side of the door to the, where the route starts cannot exceed a certain size. If you exceed that dimension, meaning you set the hinge in deeper into the, towards the center of the door, then that will permit. The door is not going to open because there's the back side of the hinge is too great to allow the hinge to articulate open. Let me actually grab a saw hinge. I have one right behind me. And while this is admittedly a IC, it's a closer model. The bottom line is when you're on the <clears throat> when you're on the pull side, that door's got to pull towards you. Um, and if you set this hinge back too far, when you're referencing the pull side of the door, if it's in too deep. There's too much material here in order for the door to get out and around. So that's the problem. You can't exceed that. Once you understand that that's the only thing you got to be sure of, you're good because the rest of it is simple and straightforward. There are only two preparations on this hinge that you have to make in terms of two procedure. Ouch. They do bite. Um, there's only two procedures that you have to be mindful of. You're going to prep the body, which will be from here to here, here to here, here to here. The second prep is going to be the face. Here to here, here to here. Okay? We've got the width, we've got the height, and then we've got the depth. That's all. <laughs> then you follow the same rules that you would follow when you're prepping for regular hinges. If you put it on the door at 7 inch, just making up a number, from the top of the door to the top of the prep or to the center of your prep, whatever you're referencing, you got to make sure that on your jam, you add an eighth of an inch to that dimension because you need an eighth of an inch gap at the top of the door. So if your door is 7 inch, the underside of the header to that same reference point is 7 and an eighth. I've just dispelled all, you know, initial uh, and, in fact, long-term uh, hesitation to people approaching sauce. I believe that sauce is the greatest hinge ever made. Uh, there are a slew of concealed hinges that are now three-way adjustable and have been they've been on the market for years. Um, I 
I have reviewed a lot of them. Sugatsuni, um, obviously Tectus. There's another company that I've reviewed, and I don't recall their name. But they all seem to, they're all the same, basically. You can move that door up and down, etc. My concern is the long-term um, behavior of the door when you are relying on screws with thread lock to keep the door in position. Now, in defense of the multi-axis adjustable concealed hinges, I've spoken to a, a, a client of mine who is in purchasing but came out of the field for decades and who can personally attest to these hinges. And he said after 10 years, he's not heard of a maintenance issue of the door sagging or moving or whatever. I'm suspect of that, and it's, and I could be completely wrong. Um, the beautiful thing about sauce is, as long as you position the hinge in the proper height from the door to the frame, there's, you're not gonna make a mistake. Um, as long as you hold that cardinal rule of not exceeding that, that dimension from the pull side of the door to the where your route starts, there's nothing to go wrong. What's great about sauce is they can handle lots of weight um, so you're going to see these on taller doors, wider doors, heavier doors, bookcases. Um, I'm talking to a client now, fun fact, that uh, closer, since we're talking about sauce, I'm talking to a client now who has four doors. Outer doors, two inner doors. The two inner doors are going to swing in. The two outer doors are going to swing out. So what's going to happen is the inner door will swing in, then the whole apparatus will come out. The problem that the client has is he wants those that pair of inner doors to only go to 90 degree because he has an arch. There's an arch. Now, if you think about that, you say, well, that shouldn't be a problem. Well, it's really not, except his dimension from the face of the wall to where the doors are is about 12 inch. So you have an arch, and now you've got a door that's arched, but it's set back 12 inch so that when that door opens, that the height of that door effectively increases and at some point is going to hit the arch overhead. And stopping it at 90 degree is what the concept is. And I've come up with an idea, not unlike this, where to make the door dead stop um, so that it doesn't really go any further. Uh, and, you know, admittedly not exactly related to this client's application. So you've got this bolt here back to the re to the plug that's here and then this spring. So as I turn that for more, the, the spring is being compressed as you can hopefully see. Okay, I'm just compressing the spring is all I'm doing. Well, my thought to make this dead stop is to replace the spring with a pipe at the proper length so that it will dead stop. It's a really an awful use of hardware to make a dead stop that way. However, um, what we don't want to do is put floor stops and there's no way to put overhead stops on the opening because it's all arched. Um, so it's a concept that may work for the client's application. Um, you know, the issue is you're going to need, you know, the, the client has to determine on this job, do they want to swing both of the doors out? Are they going to fix those outer panels? Do they want to just dead stop the doors and be done with it? Because you can open that door up, but then when you take the other panel and you get it to fold out, you're just going to be in this position. So we're not going to be able to selectively stop it at 100 and, uh, at 90 degree. It's a concept um, that happens to be kind of, I suppose, related. It occurred to me, so I thought I would mention it. Um, so, and then I had a client come in about six months ago and said, yeah, I need a new sauce hinge. The one I had broke or something to that effect. I says, I've never heard in 30 years that a sauce hinge failed. I said to the client, what were they doing with it? Was someone doing chin-ups on the door? Because he brought the hinge and showed me and it was literally, the, the laminated plates were literally bent. And I says, were they doing chin-ups on the door? And he said, no, it's a bookcase. And the children climbed up and sat on top of the bookcase. So that's the only time I saw a damaged sauce hinge and it was certainly not from normal use. And plus, they were relatively small sauce hinges. They might have been a, a 208, something in that range, so smaller, 206 maybe. Um, <clears throat> and when someone says bookcase, uh, there is no 206. I keep doing that. It might have been a 204. <clears throat> and 
And when someone says bookcase, well, that alone is going to weigh 100 pounds. And then you're going to put 200 or 300 pounds of material into it, let's say, potentially. <clears throat> and then put the weight of a couple of, you know, you know, adolescents on top. Now you're dealing with another 150 pounds, and I'm surprised only one hinge bent. So what I'm trying to say with all of this is that it's just a remarkable product, uh, etc. So now let's do this. Let's uh, do a visual tour of what you get in the box. So first of all, you're going to get three templates. They're all identical. I mean, they are literally all identical. There's nothing about these that are different. They don't need to be the same in a kit, uh, but they make them all identically. The, this is clearly poplar, which is a hardwood species of lumber. Uh, it's known as the poor man's cherry, and what that means is if you apply a cherry stain to poplar, it actually looks kind of like cherry. It actually stains up fairly well. So just an aside. So this is what the template looks like when it comes into 218 RG3. Now, it is different than the standard template because they've routed this end down. At least I believe that they're different. This has been routed down to accept the channel that's going to connect them together. So you have your indicator pin, you have, well, did I say that correctly? Locator pin is what it is. Uh, you have your locator pin here and here. You have your guide pins here and here. Okay. This is the spacer tab. The spacer tab, it exists on all ends of all of these. And the only thing the spacer tab is used for is when you, and I remember uh, earlier I spoke about the eighth of an inch. When you have this on your frame, you're going to butt that spacer tab up to the underside of the header. But when you mortise your door, you're going to rotate that down. I'm going to, I would have to loosen that with a screwdriver. Rotate that and then use it as a hook to hang it on the door. And the thickness of that item is your spacer. Well, the thickness of that end, the head of the screw, gives you that eighth of an inch margin. So spacer tab, locator, pins, guide pins. Now, the locator pins are used... When you put this onto the door on the pull side, you just push that up and you push it onto the door until it hits the locator pins. Now it's at the proper distance. And what we're accomplishing with that is going to be a guarantee that you're not exceeding that, that absolute dimension not to exceed. The, the, the one do not do in the world of sauce is automatically handled when you're using the 218 template with the 218 hinge, you don't have to worry about it. It might be five millimeter, you don't exceed that. The guide pins are, when they're in, you set your router inside of here and all your routing is the body prep, that larger uh, part of the, of, of the hinge. When you remove your guide pins, now you are just mortising the face plate. And that's all the guide pins, uh, the, these guide pins do. It's just a fancy drywall screw is all it is. Um, so now that we've distilled this down to its basic elements, it's like, okay, well, that's pretty easy. So you've got three of those. You're also going to get the three um, slide channels, I think they call them. Slotted aluminum channel. There are three of these, okay? Um, why are there three? Oh, I see why, okay. Uh, yeah, there. you don't need, th well, you do need three. Um, in this instance, but there are three channels uh, for doing this. I don't know the maximum height that they're going to get out of this. Uh huh. <clears throat> These channels are about two foot long, so depending on how you space the material out, I'm sure that you can get to a, uh, a seven foot six door, would be my guess. Somewhere in here, it should tell you the maximum door height. I'd have to lay all of this out to determine that. And. Um, I can easily do that. So based on my quick calculations with the material that's here and included, you'll be able to do um, doors that are up to seven foot. If you were going to need to do uh, eight foot and taller, you're going to need to order another template because you'll be doing four hinges, not, not four, four uh, hinges on there. Um, and you'll have to order it to be sure that it's routed for the channel um, because the standard template does not, I don't believe, includes that routing, as I said earlier. Now, you're also going to get these slide channels, and these literally are what allow you to 
clamp all this together by means of this sort of arrangement that will fit in there. And this is going to a client, so I'm not really going to assemble everything because it needs to appear to be new when the client gets it. But it's going to be just like that. Fit inside of there, that channel is going to fit over there. Okay. And we're going to go through the installation instructions. Then you have this angle bar that is going to separate two of the channels and give you the ability to adjust the bottom leg, um, as well as adjusting the templates on the U channel, the slotted U channels as well. Then you're going to get a series of screws and nuts and nails. These truss head style screws are attaching the template to the back side of the aluminum channel. This will go through here and then screw into your template. You're going to get uh, trim head nails, and that's for actually nailing the templates to the edge of the, to the edge of the door or to the frame itself. You're going to get a couple of wing nuts and uh, bolts for this for the L angle channel uh, to get those bolted to the U channels. Then you're going to get a number of star washers, and you're going to use these almost everywhere. Okay, so now let's switch to the screen view. And let's take a closer look at the item itself and the installation instructions that are included. Okay, so this is the item that we are here looking at, the 218 RG3 router guide system. Three templates are included. Saves time and money and measurements. The router guide templates can be positioned exactly to the hinge locations desired and then locked into place. The system can be moved from door to jam, thereby eliminating time-consuming measurements. True, and you know, and what are you, you know, why would you buy a hinge butt template kit or a hinge template uh, kit? It's to divide out of the equation those potentials for error, and using the tape measure is where we can all make a mistake. Um, yeah, sure, you can set the template up incorrectly and you can unintentionally reposition templates when you transfer it from the door to the frame, let's say, but it does ritualize the process to a certain extent. Uh, so we have a link below this video to the installation instructions, and it's a four-page affair. Page one is a summary. Page four is an overview of the kit itself, how to assemble it. Page two and three talk about how you mortise doors in general uh, with or without this kit. So let's start at the beginning on this. So right at the top, what they're talking about is use only the Porter Cable template guide bushing and this lock nut to assure that the guide bushing dimensions are the right diameter to accomplish what you want to accomplish. What I'm saying there here is there are different size router template bushings. And it, okay. So that's a bushing. That's a bushing. That's the nut that you need to hold it on. But here's a great example. See if we can get that a little bit larger. So what they're saying is you must use that bushing because they make them in different diameters. As the diameter of this changes, so too will the relationship of what you're routing. And what that what what that means is that the hole, sorry, the size of what they've prepped in the template is a specific size larger than what you need to net at on the door and frame. The variable there is the diameter of the bushing that you use. You must use the right bushing. Okay, They have different sizes and that's what I'm attempting to illustrate here uh, with this. And then you need to use the lock nut to hold that onto your base plate of your router. So they're literally saying at the top of the installation instructions, hey, You've, you know, you've got to use these. In fact, I had a client call me a couple of months ago and said, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the wrong size. You know, I ordered from you the bushing. I ordered from you the lock nut. I ordered from you the bit. And I ordered from you the template. And we got down to it and we realized, well, we went through the steps. I had the client put a caliper on his bushing. And yes, it was the correct bushing. And then 
I obviously realized at that moment it could only be the wrong diameter router bit. And it was correct in that the factory sent a router bit that was simply the wrong size. It was too small. So the, the router bit diameter was too small, so the prep the client was getting in the door was also too small. And he says, it's off about a quarter inch. And indeed, the router bit difference was an eighth of an inch from what they ought to have sent. So Sauce made that good right away. But, you know, the all of these pieces conspire. You This size that they've done in that piece of poplar is literally based on that dimension of the um, guide bushing, that three-quarter inch OD. You use a different guide bushing, it's you're going to make a prep. It just won't be the right size. Uh, so be mindful of that. So have those parts, and I'm going to show you in the product brochure where you can pick those up as well. To avoid installation and pro uh, problems, we recommend you do a practice installation on the same type of wood before using the template on your application. This practice will help ensure proper installation and reveal any potential difficulties with the routing equipment and or tools before using templates on your finished project. I can tell you that I have routed personally for every type of hardware imaginable, whether it be standard butt hinges or it be um, a lock set or a mortise lock, function holes, function holes with exit device trim, exit device trim, I have done olive knuckle hinges. I have done overhead concealed door closers. I've done overhead concealed uh, door controls, like overhead stops, concealed stops, and holders. Uh, the olive knuckle was the most challenging of all, by the way. I've mortised for sauce. And I can tell you that laying around the shop, I would always have a cull door, cull, C-U-L-L, -L, a piece or, or a piece of wood or something that I would use to set up on, that I would test... I would make adjustments before I put my router onto the $1,000 anagray veneer door. And if oak is $100, anagray is $1,000. Um, so you want to make sure you've got it right. And, of course, the old saying, measure twice, cut once, that is that ought to be one of the Ten Commandments in the wood shop. And I'm sure that, it's, I'm sure that it is probably number two after, you know, wear safety equipment. Uh, masks and eye protection, ear, ear protection, all three of those mandatory. And you can't say one is more important than the other, but to me, if I had to give something up, uh, it would be eye protection and then ear protection, but that mask is always going to be on my mouth because breathing in that sawdust is pretty brutal. To mount sauce invisible hinges using the hinge router guide template, you will need the following. You're going to need an extra long router bit. That's for sure. Now, let's go to table B. I happen to know table B is on page two. Here's table B. For doing the 218, you're going to need to use the half by four and a half long router bit. That's a, a MANA 51312. I can show that to you, and it's linked to, in this video down below, uh, that router bit. Okay, so it's a really long router bit. It's meant for a plunge router. You're going to have to have a plunge router, by the way, to do this. Um, and you're going to need that long router bit because you're never going to get down the depth it will take to mortise for the body of the hinge uh, without a long router bit. Okay. Oh, by the way, 42024, 42237. 42024. Okay, there's the bushing. And then it was 42237. And there's the, uh, well, what are they doing here? RGB 100, yeah, okay, so it's it's the same product. So the, the point is you can buy the bushing and the lock nut together. Those are both available here. RGB 100, yeah, okay. So here it is, RGB 100. This would be in the, kit, in the catalog, which we'll show you at the end. So you can pick up the bit and the lock nut and the bushing, and you know that it's all going to work together just splendidly. Hinge installation template package. Sure, that's what you're buying here. Measuring scale, ruler, or spacing sticks. Uh, okay, any of it, all of it. Electric drill or a brace. Um, I have not seen anyone use a brace in 30 years. Uh, 
they are nice tools though a bit in a brace um, you're gonna need electricity for the router so you know an electric drill probably <laughs> is what you'd use um, selection of spade drills or wood bits I don't think you're gonna need any of that well actually no that's not true you're going to need you're gonna need a spade bit and uh, and I'll show you why so what they get into here is figure one references the various components of the hinge router guide template become familiar with this terminology because it will be used throughout these instructions the locator pin here and here that I mentioned earlier the nails which are separate the guide pins and then your spacer tab every that's everything we just went over so understand what those are called they talk about this uh, okay let's go down side view of mortise for hinge we talked about this as well this dotted line is going to be the starter hole see table a so when they talk about having a spade bit or a wood bit um, yeah that's where that little prep is going to come you're going to need to drill a hole in the door in the frame before you stick your giant router bit into it um, to start cutting and you're going to make multiple passes, multiple passes. I find trying to take off more than a quarter inch at one time is a lot of wood to remove in a door. Um, and I wouldn't dream of doing it all at once. It's just not, that's, that's, you know, you're going to make multiple passes. Um, so you're going to drill a hole is what they're saying. Then you're going to do your body prep and then your plate prep. And we'll talk about that in a moment. The rest of page one literally is the recommended spacing of invisible sauce hinges. If you're doing three hinges on a door, you're literally going to put them in these locations. That's where the manufacturer wants you to put them. What's interesting about that is that's the, that is not the formula that doors are hung on, where you're going to have a hinge every 30 inch, basically. So you might want to check with your wood door manufacturer to be sure that locating that sauce hinge here is not going to violate a warranty. I have heard warranty claims shot down for far less. So be mindful. I would check with your wood door manufacturer and get it in writing that, that is, this is an approved position. You're normally going to see you know, top, bottom, and middle in North America. But in Europe and other places, you're going to see two at the top like you do here. And that's the smarter way to do it because 70% of the weight of the door is actually hung on that top hinge. Having two at the top is simply smarter. The hinge down here, he's just there for the party. All he's doing is to help and keep the door straight. He's not carrying hardly any weight from what I understand. Notice that the center hinge is not shown in the usual location near the middle of the door. The center hinge should be located one half of the distance from the center of the door to the center of the top hinge. This is to fortify the door against extra leverage intended, pardon me, this is to fortify the door against extra leverage extended on the top hinge. And that top hinge does all that work. On applications requiring more than four sauce invisible hinges, a good rule of thumb is to place more sauce invisible hinges in the upper half of the door than in the lower half. This has four, but when you go to taller doors, go up here first before you go down here every single time. So you'll have either two and one, two and two, three and two, three and three, four and three. Now you're, you got pretty tall doors at that point. I don't think I've ever done a sauce that would have more than five hinges on it. That may have been a 10 foot door that we did, I don't recall. But we've also used sauce hinges uh, for extremely heavy doors. We have done a sauce, a 16 gauge hollow metal door 3070 with three quarter inch laminate, pardon me, three quarter inch granite that was applied and I couldn't tell you the weight of that door. It must have been 400 pounds. And I think on that door we used five hinges as well, just for the weight. That was done at a mall about 25 years ago. And as far as I understand, it's swinging today just like it did 25 years ago. Let's now move on to page two. Okay, sliding over to page two. Figure three illustrates a typical door jam where sauce and visible hinges are to be mounted. Sure. Again, that shows us the middle hinge biased towards the top, half of the distance between the center of the door and the center of the top hinge. Become familiar with the terminology as it will be used throughout these instructions. Header, head jam, intended installation and point, hinge jam, edge of hinge jam. Okay, sure, the 
outside of the frame on the pull side, the door rabbit. The rabbit is the pocket in which the door sits or resides. Jam preparation, refer to figure four. Okay. That's what, so page two and three is not using the entire kit. It's demonstrating the procedure by which you would do the machining of the hardware. Remove the guide pins from the router uh, template. Now, they're saying remove the guide pins out first. Remove those. And then they want you to apply the template to the hinge jam so the locator pins rest against the face of the unit, of the, of the jam, okay, so that the mandatory requirement here to here is observed. Now, I've been talking a big game about that. Um, what we need to do now is we need to look at a SAUCE 218 template. This is the heart of the matter. Quarter inch is the magic dimension. If exceeded, the door may not open. This is it right here. And when you place the template on the edge of the frame, the locator pin is, sits here where the preparation is in the template will not allow you to do anything other than that dimension there. The bottom line is, again, if you go larger than that, your door is not, probably not going to open. A way to illustrate what that might look like would be under the clearance detail here. And all I did was I, I, I pulled up the first SAUCE 218 that I clicked on because I know those documents are there. And this really illustrates what our problem is. Okay? Right here. What we're saying is if you pull that dimension, if the E dimension is greater than what you're allotted, you're not going to get the door open. And that's why. Okay, so we've adequately covered that one up pretty well. The locator pin gives you that dimension. So they're saying to pull those guide pins out Remove the guide pins. Place the router template on the jam so the locator tabs are flush against the face of the jam on the pull side. Uh, it can only be on the pull side. You can't install it any other way, so you won't get that wrong. Um, and are on the inside of the intended door swing. Yes, of course, again. The spacer tab should be flush against the head jam and positioned in line with the template, meaning parallel. So what they're saying is you need to have the spacer tab holding your template down that dimension from the head down, uh, from the from the from the header that's the way it's supposed to be once the desired position is established meaning you've got the dimension from the header to the center of your prep it will have to be this minimum dimension and i can tell you what that is because i've got the template in my hand the top of the door to the center of the prep is about 8 inch uh, approximately eight inch. I'm just eyeballing that. So the top of the door to the top of your prep is going to be about five and three quarter. Um, you can, to go less than that, I don't see a reason why you would need to have this closer to the top, but you could also, um, you know, position this anywhere you want. When you take the template and with the spacer and butt it to the head jam, that's the standard location that the factory is telling you to use. You don't have to use that. You can come down a little more. Uh, you can't really go up without modifying the template. Um, so be mindful. That dimension is somewhat fixed. Once the desired position is established, the nails can be tapped into the door rabbit to secure the template in place. Nail here, nail here. You're going to nail that in. Okay. Now, they've said pull the guide pins out um, of the router. And what they're intending to tell you to do here is to, next step is going to be to route the plate dimension. I prefer not to do it that way. And the reason I don't remove those pins is I want to do the deep prep first. Um, so you're going to, and we're jumping a little ahead, but you're going to drill a pilot hole. It's going to be a large pilot hole. They call it a starter hole. I leave the pins in and then I do that big prep first and then I remove the pins and then I would do the plate. Why do I do it in the opposite way? 
I want to work my way out. I want to do the deep stuff first, um, and I want to do the finished material last. It reduces my potential for damaging my finished preparation. Now, they're saying to do it in this order because you are already automatically going to have removed a lot of wood when you prep for the plate first. Uh, the template here tells us that the thickness of the leaf is 1330 seconds, so basically 3 eighths of an inch. So it's a lot of wood that will already have been removed. But when you have your router in the template, if you tip the, t the router or if you do something uh, very unwise and remove the router from the template while it's still spinning, you have the, ten you have the potential to nick your finished prep. I like to leave that for the last so that I have the least opportunities to damage my finished product. If you prep the door, nobody cares what this looks like. Nobody cares at all. You're never going to see it. But this I care about. So that's why I do it that way. Okay. Now, um, two 18s, we talked about the starter hole, 1 in 23, 30 seconds. So 1 divided by 32 times 23 uh, plus 1. So you're going to have a, basically an inch and three quarter diameter hole, um, you know, ever so slightly less, almost just a bit heavy on one and eleven sixteenths. So you'll need a spade bit or something of that size uh, to do that prep. That's your starter hole. The depth of the starter hole should be at least the values listed. I'm sorry. I've, I've said that backwards. I, I, as I'm saying the words, I'm thinking that that's too large of a hole. The drill size you're going to use is half inch. I would drill a larger hole. I would probably drill something like that's 5 eighths because your router bit's going to be half inch. You're going to drill it to basically inch and three quarter deep. I apologize. Um, the, starter, the depth of the starter hole should be at least the value listed. Depths exceeding those tabulated will not adversely affect the hinge operation. It won't. But you don't want voids inside the door uh, at all. Now, moving up to the top of page two on the right side, be careful not to nick or gouge the template. That's it. If you do that, if you if you remove that router while it's still turning, you're going to eventually ruin your template. There's no way to patch it. If you've got a nick in the side of the template, you're going to have a, you're going to have that. Uh, prep done on every door and frame that you do. Drill a starter hole for the router to the proper depth in the center of the hole. Always turn it off, leave it completely still, not even rotating at the slowest speed would I remove it because you're dealing with a plunge router. Those are heavier, they're larger motors, a lot more gyroscopic action happening when that router bit is moving because of the weight of the tool and the revolutions per minute, the size of the drill bit. So completely off when you put it in, completely off when you pull it out. Let's move on to routing the hinge outline. Routing the hinge outline, the chart in table B lists the maximum depths to which the hinge outlines should be routed. It is advisable to check the depth of the cut you are making prior to removing a significant amount of wood. If desired, the required depth may be obtained by uh, making multiple router passes. I would say I, I, in, in decades of prepping wood doors, I've never tried to pass more than a quarter inch. It's just too dreadful. Um, anyway. So 218, 1330 second is the depth using that prior mentioned um, router bit along with the guide, along with the lock nut. Um, and your faceplate is 1330 seconds. If you recall, that was the dimension from our template, 1330 second on a 218 hinge. Caution, do not exceed the listed depths when routing the hinge outline as binding of the hinges will occur. Yeah, that's true. Certainly when you move the depth of something deeper, it's going to just force this dimension in this direction. Okay, so you want that to be the proper depth. Use whatever means of measurement best suited to you. Determine the location of the next hinge to be mounted on the jam. Mark or measure that distance so as to not damage the door. Remember the distances you will have selected, as you will need to recall those measurements when mounting the templates on the door. So basically what they're saying is wherever you put it on the frame is where it's going to go on the door, except that 
You have to account for that spacer tab, whatever that allowance is, about an eighth of an inch. The point being is whatever that spacer tab thickness is, let's say it's an eighth of an inch. If you put this at seven and an eighth here, well, it ain't going to be seven and an eighth. It's going to be about eight and an eighth. Um, you know, you're going to need to be an eighth of an inch less or spacer tab less of that same dimension on the door. Uh, so they're saying remove the template from the jam and move it to the next location. So you can obviously buy these templates as single pieces. That's what that means. And that's where these two pages really fall into in terms of an understanding of what you're prepping. You can buy the templates alone. Prior uh, door prep, prior to mounting the template on the door, make certain that the door is properly oriented. The clearance between the head jam and the door is set with the spacer tab. It should be positioned one quarter turn so the template will hang from the top of the door. And what they're saying with that is it needs to look like this. Right here. You flip it up when you're doing the jam, you flip it down when you're doing the door. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Place the router guide template on the door so the locator pins rest flush against the pull side of the door and are on the inside of the desired direction of the door swing. Continuing on, prior to mounting the template on the door, make sure make certain that the door is properly oriented. What they're saying there is when you apply the template to the door itself, make sure you're applying it to the proper side. The locator pin has to be on the pole side of the door so that you are referencing the same dimension. The clearance between the head jam and the door is set with the spacer tab. It should be positioned one quarter turn so the template will hang from the top of the door. We talked about that. Place the router guide template on the door so the locator pins rest flush against the pole side face of the door and are on the inside of the de desired direction of door swing. Place the router guide template onto the door so the locator pins rest flush against the pole side face of the door. Okay, and they're basically just doubling down on telling you and are on the inside of the desired swing of the door swing. So they're they're assuming that you're putting it on the pull side. They're assuming the door is swing in. So when you're on the inside, on the pull side, you should see that locator tab is the bottom line. Once the desired position is established, the nails can be tapped in, uh, to secure the template in place. Again, being careful not to nick or gouge the template, drill the starter hole for the router to the depth listed in table A, again, one in 23 30 seconds in the center of the hinge outline on the template. Now moving to page three, the chart in table B lists the maximum depths for which the hinge outlines should be routed. It is advisable to check the depth of the cut you are making prior to removing a significant amount of the wood. If desired, the required depth may be cut in multiple passes. Again, 13, 30 seconds, and they're just duplicating the prior language. Recalling the measurements you had made to determine the hinge spacing on the jam, use those identical measurements to position the template for the next hinge mortise on the door. You only need to account for that spacer thickness on the top hinge. You can then take center to center dimensions or top to top or bottom to bottom dimensions for the successive hinges. Remove the template from the top of the door and move it to the new location, repeating steps three through seven, depending on the number of hinges required. At this point, the routing of the outline portions of the hinge mortises is complete. The next step is to route the deep mortises. This is where you're gonna put the guide pins in. In my scenario, I'm doing it backwards. I'm doing the guide pin work first. But doing it according to this, we're going to uh, put the guide pins in Okay, and then we're going to move on. Moving on, place the guide pins into their proper holes on the template. The guide pins are threaded and must not be hammered or otherwise forced into position. Um, you're going to thread those back in. They're basically a drywall screw. Care must also be taken that the threaded guide pins are not over tightened. 
Um, okay. Completion of jam mortises starting at the top hinge. Uh, position the template so the nails fit into the holes left in the jam from the previous route. You know, they're talking about taking it, putting it on the jam, putting it onto the door, putting it back onto the jam, putting it onto the door. I would not be doing it that way. I would be doing all of my preparations at once on the frame. In fact, if I was doing a very large project, I might even have two templates. Um, or I would have one template that would be uh, absolutely constructed so as nothing could move. So reattach the templates back into the original holes. Complete the routing of the mortise for the body, the deep portion. And that's where this comes in. The 218, the depth of the mortise is going to be 1 in 21 30 seconds. So 1 divided by 32 times 21 plus 1. So 1.65, so just heavy on 1 and 5 eighths or just light on 1 and 11 sixteenths. And then you're going to make multiple passes with your plunge router. Moving to the top of page, uh, top right of page three. After the deep mortises have been routed, remove the template. Place a sauce invisible hinge into the mortise you have completed and inspect the following. Does the hinge fit snugly? Does any portion of the hinge extend beyond the rabbit of the jam? So meaning is it flush with the jam? The body of the hinge should fit snugly into the mortise. If the hinge body extends above the jam after the hinge has been pushed into the mortise as far as possible, verify that the mortises have been routed to the proper depths, correct as required. Position the template on the next location on the jam. Repeat until you have everything routed. Completion of the door mortises. Let's move to that. Okay, so as we move through here, completion of the door mortises, Again, position the template so the nails fit into the holes left in the door from the previous route. The locator pins should be toward the inside of the door swing again as before. So on the pole side of the door, they're assuming it's the inside. Your door could swing out and then you're on the outside, so be mindful. That's why I'm saying on the pole side of the door. Once the proper position is re-established, the nails can be tapped in to secure the template in place. To complete the routing of the hinge mortise, it will be necessary to remove wood from the door to the depths listed in Table C. Again, is recommended that again it is recommended that the wood be removed by making multiple router passes. After the deep mortise has been routed, remove the template from the door and position it into the next hinge on the location. Repeat those steps. Okay. After having completed the routing of the hinge mortises, notice that the hinge mortise is not centered within the thickness of the door. The thin section corresponds to the inside surface of the door, or again the pull side. Again, not exceeding that quarter inch mandated maximum from our template. The hinge is not centered because this cannot be exceeded. Um, place the saw's invisible hinges into the mortises so the hinge bodies straddle the thin section of the door. Using the wood screws supplied with the hinges, secure the hinges to the door. The door can be moved into a position where the remaining hinge bodies can be placed into the respective mortises in the jam. Secure the jam side of the hinges with the remaining wood screws. Exercise the door to see that it opens and closes freely throughout the required amount of opening. Yeah, great. Cycle the door. Absolutely. Now, we are on the fourth page, and the fourth page simply discusses assembling the, the template together. And it would be handy for you to open this up on another page. Uh, it'd be handy for me to have it open on another page, too. Sorry, stand by. Okay, so we're going to leave it open on one page here. We'll pull up these step-by-step -step instructions on the left side of the pane. Okay, so place the routed... So what they want you to do to assemble this is actually place it and get it 
uh, onto a door, and you're going to use the door as the fixture by which to get the unit assembled um, onto, so to speak. Place the routed side of the wood router guide, refer to illustration below, which is here, in, into a slotted aluminum channel rail. Slide the guide to the end of the channel so the wood is flush with the aluminum. That's, if you recall earlier, part of the channel, part of the template is routed. When you slide that into the channel, the channel is going to be flush with the template. So it's routed to the proper uh, depth so that this tongue fits into the U-channel. Place small, let's see here now. Okay, place small tooth washer on wood screw. We've got those truss head wood screws and then one of those star washers. And you're going to put that uh, slip screw through the slot in the channel and screw it to the wood hole closest to the flush end, which is right here. Let's bring that up. Right here. That's flush. Tighten that. Turn the spacer tab on the flush end of the guide one quarter turn. Get it down so that you're pushing that against the top of the door. Put screws and washers into any two remaining router guide holes and tighten. So put one down here, put one in the middle. The edge of the template, actually, the routed end, has four holes ready for you to receive. So you now have three screws in here, truss head screws with the star washers, and it's secured. This template is secured to this channel. Slide a second router guide into the other end of the above channel and guide assembly. Slide the guide about two inches from the, uh, about two inches into the channel. So, you know, be about two inches from here. And that is looking at the template. Sure, that's going to work. So now they're talking about right this area. So take another template. Get it stuck in the bottom here and run a screw into it, a screw with a star washer. Place a small washer on the wood screw, slip the screw through the slot in the channel, turn it into the hole, but do not tighten. You've only tightened these three at this point. And the reason you're not going to tighten any more is so that you can move them, slide them to fit on your door. Step seven, place another channel on the guide. and insert two washers and screws as before, do not tighten them. So again, you're gonna take another, well, at this point, you're gonna take a channel and attach it down to the bottom section. You're gonna want this one to be in the bottom hole and this one to be in the next hole from the bottom of the template. And there are, there are, you know, there are two holes drilled on either side of each guide pin, and you'll see that. Uh, what I mean to say there is, If we're looking at the edge of your template, like this, um, there will be a hole for a screw, a hole for a screw. There'll be a guide pin, a guide pin. A hole for a screw, a hole for a screw is what that's going to look like. Do not tighten. Don't tighten any of the, either of those screws. Turn a machine screw in each tapped hole in the angle rail so that the screw head is inside the rails corner so you can't you're not really able to see it at all but right here is the angle bracket right here and what that's gonna look like is and I showed it to you earlier it's gonna look like that well the thing is there are a couple of tapped holes you're gonna put the head you're gonna thread the screw in so that the head is on this side then the screw would ultimately come through on the back side you're gonna build that assembly and then you're going to put it through a slotted hole into your second channel. And then down into the third channel will go another screw. Place the angle rail into the end of the channel so one screw extends into the slot, in, 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 into the slot in the channel, and the angle extends six inches beyond the channel. Down this way is what they're talking about. Step 10, place a large tooth washer over the screw Turn the wing nut, so another star washer and the wing nut. Oh. Okay. 
Step 11. Place the third channel over the angle and secure with machine screw, uh, star washer, and wing nut. But don't tighten. Don't tighten that one. Tighten them but so that they can slide. Put the remaining guard, uh, router guide into the channel. Three screws, three star washers. Do not tighten them. Now you've got one big long contraption all put together and you can move the second and third router templates in relationship to the first one. Okay. Now, put nails into the holes in each end of the guide. So you've got three guides, you've got two nail holes in each, you've got six nails, and indeed with this there are six nails. Shown here, shown here, shown here, shown here, shown here, and shown here. Hang the assembly. So hang the assembly from the top of the door using the spacer tab. Rotate clip a half turn if required. You might have this turn the wrong way. Using the spacer tab in step three, could you have that turn the wrong way? No. Uh, well, yeah, you might need to because depending on the hand of the door, you might be working from, you might be working from this end, depending on the handing of the door. Okay. The two locator pins in each guide should be against the pull side of the door. Lay the door on its edge as shown here. You've got it all assembled and now you're going to basically get everything slid because all of these holes are loose. These screws are all loose. Get everything slid to where you want it and then nail it down. Slide each router guide to the desired location and tighten all the screws. Uh, see attached instructions for mount. I like to nail it first and then tighten the screws because as you rotate that screw clockwise to tighten it. It has a tendency to draw things with it. So I nail it down first and then I tighten the screws. Um, see instructions for mounting sauce invisible hinges using the hinge guide template. Uh, we've gone over that. Partially drive the nails into the door only far enough to secure the location to each router guide. 17 to route the mortise follow the procedure that we've gone over in detail. After routing the door, pull the nails out. Don't pull them all the way out. There's no need. Just get them drawn up inside of the template, the one by or the three quarter inch poplar. Rotate the spacer back to its home position. Then you can take it to the frame, drive the nails into the frame, repeat the process. So that's how you assemble the entire kit. It's straightforward. The only thing I would mention that I would like for it to have would be a clear reference as to the center line. So if I was marking or measuring my center lines, I would be able to see that. And I would want my center line dimension to be down on the inside of the template so I could see it on the edge of the door. Because I'm going to hook my tape measure from here and I'm going to mark my locations. Then I'm going to move my template to those locations. And I want to reference that line to a, a vertical line on the inside of the template. Now let's move to the product uh, cut sheet or brochure that's here as well. Okay, so as we get to the end of this video, we're looking now at the product brochure or cut sheet. And, you know, this is an overview. I'm not going to, I won't go through it line by line as we have the installation instructions because much of this will be review. The individual templates, should you need to order those, are listed here. 218IT, individual template. RG3, router guide 3, three templates. That image should now be quite familiar to us. Okay. So, sauce can be done faster, better, stronger, the whole nine yards, the whole Steve Austin uh, routine. The RGB 100 template guide and lock nut, along with the router bit we talked about earlier. Individual templates are here, and they, what's handy about this is they tell you the size of the, of the router bit that you need, and what happened was... The client was, I, I had mentioned it much earlier, the client was doing um, two 16s, I believe, uh, and needed a half inch bit, and they sent him a 3 8 bit, which is why he was off a quarter inch. Three-piece router guide system. Now, 
it's handy to know that they've got the RG4 here as well. And that's going to get you those applications where you're doing four hinges. And when I loosely laid out the entire uh, unit on my desk, I was getting seven foot. If you need to go taller than that, you know, seven foot six, let's say 90 inch, you'll be doing four hinges only because of the height of the door. Okay. So you can do that either way. This, the second and final page is going to talk about the uh, accessories that you would use, the router bit, uh, the router bits themselves. So the column here talks about the template. This column gives you the part number for the bit. All of those can be researched back into our site. The 46259S, that's going to require a 3 8 collet, not the standard collet. RGB 100. And that's where this ends. Down here on this page does not apply to what we're working on. So very handy, very uh, simple and straightforward sort of um, presentation when it comes to machining for sauce hinges. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now I am admittedly quite positively an unabashed, unapologetic fan of sauce hinges. I believe that there is no reason to use others. Is it a nice idea to be able to move my door in relationship to the frame? Sure, you would argue that it is. But I find that people will use those hinges not because they want to, they want to be able to adapt the door over time as the frame moves or the floors move, etc. But they're doing it to help ensure against machining or routing that's not thoroughly spot on. And my purpose is to tell you, measure twice, cut once. It's no different than measuring for anything else. You, you can't violate the cardinal rule, the quarter inch or the E dimension with this system. So there's nothing to worry about there. You just have to, you know, measure it and put it in the right location and the sauce hinge does the rest. So I don't see a need to be able to need to adjust that door at all because the door is not going to move because of the hinge. Uh, my opinion is giving the hinge the three-way adjustability somewhat perverts the uh, integrity mm -hmm. of the hinge to begin with. I think you've got to give a little to get a little in that regard. And those invisible hinges from those other manufacturers, oh, I recall, McKinney, uh, Sugatsuni, and uh, of course, Tectus. Those were the three. Um, I think that you've got to um, sacrifice something and I just don't think you need to fix something that's not broken. And Sauce is such an elegant solution that I um, it makes me a fan of, of the product. Actually, before we wrap this up, let's switch to the screen view one more time so I can show you some other Sauce resources. And before wrapping up this video, I wanted to show you where some resources were for Sauce, which are uh, valuable resources to be able to review. So under this video here to the link to the manufacturers page will not only pull up all of the sauce products that we sell okay, by means of this uh, horizontal navigation but also a link to the manufacturers website as well as a link to the full product catalog that will allow you to review all things sauce related and you know obviously we're dealing with the um, the uh, kit, the template kit that we have here. I'm sorry, it's not a template kit. <laughs> it's just a hinge kit. Uh, these are certainly not template hinges. Um, but the rest of the catalog is going to allow you a tour through all things sauce related. I once her read a quote from the inventor of sauce that the gentleman said, I don't care how heavy the door is, keep throwing sauce hinges at it. And I'm very tempted to um, agree with that because I've hung, hung obscenely heavy doors with a hinge where butt hinges, knuckle hinges are not going to work. Obviously, pivots are going to hang the heaviest of items uh, in builder's hardware. Uh, if you want to hang a 1,000, a 2,000, a 3,000 pound door, 
pivots are, will be the go-to. And we've literally done pivots for 3,000 pound doors. Um, but hinges, a regular butt hinge, you know, you know, if you look in the hinge catalogs of Stanley, of PBB, there are going to be guidelines in terms of weight. And yes, you are definitely going to see some very heavy weight ratings on hinges. So if we were to pull up the Stanley catalog, Stanley Hardware. My favorite catalog is the 2010 Architectural Hardware catalog that's here, because uh, I guess I'm familiar with it, but there is a chart in it that will give us guidelines in terms of weight ratings. Sorry, I knew that I had scrolled past it. There we go. Uh, you can see that their chart literally has data for a hinge that's 1,000 pounds. Up to 2,000 pounds, in fact. This BB-852. And do a find function on our keyboard for that. Okay. Well, that's not a standard hinge. That's going to be, um, you know, a, a, a very, you know, that is a non-builder's hardware piece of equipment. That's going to be uh, generally welded to place. Um, but what I'm driving at is on that chart, where do standard hinges really stop working? Well, they, you know, the, the, the uh, and they don't even list a ball bearing hinge. These are all concealed bearing, uh, which does tip the scales in the favor of hinges. The CB hinge is more, far more capable than, a, uh, than an FBB179, just a ball bearing hinge. So they're doing concealed bearing. So the point of what, what I'm driving at is to do even moderately heavy doors, um, you know, in the 225 pound range, okay, which, you know, I'm thinking 3670, 16 gauge steel stiffened, okay, you, you're automatically for sure at a five inch tall hinge um, concealed bearing heavyweight. So you're already at the upper limits of what you're going to see in terms of doors, and you're really only dealing with, you know, 225 pounds, if it's a high usage door, obviously. Okay. Um, and after that, you don't really see hinges of that, you know, for builder's hardware. Now, why is the weight important? Well, the weight's important because um, on that link, on the manufacturer's page link, there is a nomograph that's here. I don't really understand the term nomograph in terms of a definition, uh, but this is the chart by which you determine, um, you know, the the quantity, the part number of the hinge that you're going to use, along with the quantity. Their chart goes up to 500 pounds. Okay. And you know you're dealing with you're dealing with you know their standard product line you know up to a 220 hinge it's the most massive hinge they make but for an inch and three quarter door you're, you'll be using a 218 so the way the nomograph works is you just literally you know pick your door width so if we're down here in 36 you come up to you know uh, 500 and then you're going to come across and you're going to ultimately end up seeing you know your your um, maximum door weight and what hinge and at what quantity you'd be using. So, and when you use this chart, you're not going to be getting three foot doors at 500 pounds on a SOS 218, not, not even close in fact. But the fact of the matter is you're going to be comfortably, depending on the width of the door, um, you're, going to, you're going to be you know, in, in a very respectable 200 pound range on this hinge. Now that does clash with my personal experience. I've I've seen far heavier things installed with sauce hinges, like bookcases. Um, you know, properly reinforced bookcases, where the, you know it, there are several hundred pounds that have been applied on it. Um, you know, and, and then of course my story about the 16 gauge 307 metal door, along with the laminated granite. Um, you know, that door hung flawlessly. 
the point being it's helpful to know where to find this uh, weight graph um, nomograph. Here's your example, 30 inch wide, 200 pounds, inch and three quarter, four sauce to 18 hinges uh, is the line that they're showing here. Okay. And, uh, and there you go. So let's also look at in the page here as well is the clearance detail, which we looked at a little bit earlier but let's just draw attention to it. It's a very common question to get, the factory does, I should say. Um, can I apply something to the face of the door and or the frame? And this is gonna be the sheet they're gonna send. So they're showing you what you can do to the pull side of the opening um, in a graphical sort of sense. And this all boils down to that dimension E in our 218, it can't exceed a quarter inch. Here they have the hinge mortised directly to the outside of the door. Okay, so that dimension E um, can then be represented by something you would apply. But again, it can't be more than a quarter inch. Or the door is not gonna open, you know, is, is what they're referring to here. But different ways to go about accomplishing uh, how to make that work are here. If you want to apply something, well then you have to not mortise it in this area here. Just gives you different graphical uh, representations based on where you apply something as well. Okay, so it all boils down to that dimension E. There's also a document here called Cased Jam, uh, shows another uh, application uh, which would be absolutely considered quite standard. Uh, this application that we're looking at here of what your opening is going to look like um, in terms of a standard installation and how it would go to you know, 95 to 105 degree, depending on, um, you know, the thickness of this casing, you know, and what that dimension E is. It's a very handy document to look at. Um, speaking of that, the sauce catalog, as you scroll through, will give you obviously a tour of this. Uh, this is called Falling Water. Um, I understand this is the one of the top three visited homes in the United States, the White House, Graceland, and Falling Water, something like that. Frank Lloyd Wright's crowning achievement. Um, there is apparently sauce used in uh, in the home. I'm not surprised that Frank Lloyd Wright would have gravitated towards the sauce hinge. It's a very elegant. Um, what you're going to be able to fo find through here pertaining to hinges are not only all of the technical information that goes along with um, these hinges, there is going to be, of course, a, uh, an updated nomograph when it comes to a Hercules hinge that they have. And this is where um, you're going to be able to see some really epic um, door weights. Okay? Uh, so we're able to really crush the prior you know, outline of what we had just discussed with this Hercules model. Okay? pushing 1100 pound door here as a maximum. Yeah, there, <laughs> there, there is, um, so, so they've tested it to over a thousand pounds. You know, this nomograph would, would really um, exp uh, show very clearly uh, th that statement that was made in terms of, I don't care how heavy the door is, just keep adding sauce hinges to it. Okay, and that is illustrated by, you know, as you see, as the weight goes up, so does the quantity of hinges. Okay, it's a very interesting um, uh, facet there. We'll do a future review on a Hercules hinge at some point. Uh, then all the hinges are listed here as well. Fire rated versions uh, that you can use on hollow metal doors. Uh, I don't know if they're rated for wood doors. They are wood plastic composite doors with Georgia Pacific core. Very important that the door be listed um, and have a procedure for the hinge that you're going to use. And then of course power, tra uh, power transfer hinges here as well. Um, and with a power transfer hinge you have to be mindful of watching how many amps you're going to draw through it. Maximum wire rating is two and a half amps it says. And you get the picture. More information as we go through this entire catalog. 
Okay, let's wrap up this video on camera. In conclusion, if you have any questions on the SOS R, uh, 218 RG3 or the 4, uh, be mindful. Uh, reach out to us. We'll be happy to assist. Um, if you want to order a, an additional uh, unit, um, which I don't see listed, be sure to specify that because the standard models don't have this mortise here to accept the channels. Um, so if you're expanding your system or more realistically, you're replacing one on an existing system, be sure to specify that so we can order the proper item. I'm partial to sauce, and it's because I believe it to be an incredibly elegant hinge. It's easy to install once you understand exactly how it works, and I think uh, will, over years and, in fact, decades, prove to substantially outlast. It's not only competition, but the use of... Uh, you know, mainstream standard butt hinges with, you know, steel knuckles grinding against each other. Any questions on the 218 RG3 or any other sauce product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.